Welcome back, everyone, to the post-steamed 0K 1v1 tournament. We are into the semifinals. Sorry about the delay there, but we are getting going with a match between Kane and Steel Blue. Oh, wait. What? Oh. We can rejoin. They, okay, they started. They started without us, so we can actually get in immediately. But yeah, Kane and Steel Blue is going to be on intersection, and this is going to be semifinals. We already saw Steel Blue was playing earlier, and it was a bit of a grindy match. They they had a hard time actually getting the momentum they needed against their against Mackie, but they did manage. So I'm wondering how they can do with Kane. Kane's a bit rusty though. What do you think? We have also a Hokumoko here. Hi, Hokumoko. Hello. Say, so, yeah, what do you think, Coco? Well, both Kane and Steel Blue are very very good players. Um, I think we're going to have a very nice match, and it's it's a really really cool map for. The middle is very, very contested, but the the main, like, look look at the corners. You have two corners with a lot of the metals in the map that I think both players will try to expand to white early. That is say. typically, yeah, that is typically the way you play this map, because that is the way that you kind of have to. I mean, this map is a map that doesn't really allow for a whole lot of, a whole lot of defense. It's very open. So you get people, they go to the corners, they set up defenses on the ramps because they can. There's room for the towers there. And then from there, you can actually get some expansion. But usually what will end up happening is the players will split it in half. If someone manages to get both corners, that's generally going to be game because they have such a metal advantage. There isn't much their opponents can do. Right. So we have um, Kane with tanks and still blue with Cloakies. Cloakies is very, quite popular lately. Um, but tanks give them a run for their money, let's say. Yeah, I was playing a Cloakie versus Tank match earlier, and my goodness, Welders against Glaives. Welders, I joked before about Welders being overpowered, but no, really, Welders are actually really strong. They're not to be underestimated. So when you see Welders, and you're playing Cloakie, you might just want to get away from there, maybe use some Reaver, maybe some Reavers, maybe use some Ronin. Don't use Glaives. Glaives will die. I mean, it's working decently well right now yeah. against the Kodachi, but it's not enough. The point is that Welders is, is a bit of uh, you know a bridge of one's rule it's what how can we make a, a builder that can beat raiders yeah which is not the way they normally want to have builders on because builders are normally going to be <laughs> what you kill with raiders however i understand that though because tanks do, don't really have much of a light force i mean yeah they have kodachis and have blitzes but those are too heavyweight to be useful against raiders you only get like two or three of them at the stage that most people are going to have 10 glaives or 10 bandits uh, I definitely agree, but my bet is that in the next few weeks we'll see a Welder nerf. I agree. It's... I think Welders are going to likely see probably a fire rate nerf, I would think. Like, they're not... I think the damage is okay, and I think they should be able to take out one or two Glaives, but if you have three or four at least, no. It's like, at that point, the Glaive should win hand... just easily win. However, at this point, we're seeing the Kodachis managed to get loads of raiding in. I'd say before, they weren't super heavyweight units, or they were fairly heavyweight units. They weren't able to spread out that much, but intersection is a map where that doesn't matter. I mean, your opponents are in that one corner, so hey, there we go. Kane's just able to take out both the metal extractors Steel Blue had up front and really start to cripple the economy. Although he lost the Kodachi, and the Kodachi is, as we said, if you cannot fill the big army, every Kodachi lost is a problem. And... That's a very fair point. Yeah, it's 160 metal for taking, getting rid of two, well, basically four metal per second for the, for about half a minute. I'd still say that's 120 metal at least Steel Blue didn't get because of the Kodachi, so it's a reasonably even trade. Although I say that there were actually two Kodachi, so never mind. Steel Blue actually is ahead by 200 metal as a result. The point is that I didn't see Steel Blue raiding much, as he's, he's continuing to make um, glaives. I'm, I'm not entirely too. sure what it what the plan is. I was thinking Glaive um, Imp, and we are in indeed seeing Imp being built, so that makes perfect sense. So the idea, of course, is you throw the Imp down there, and then the vehicles drive on top of it, and the Glaives are able to come in and finish up when everyone's right. MP'd. Which is, a, I mean, that's a really good strategy against vehicles. Like, the campaign even teaches you to do that because it's such a good strategy against vehicles. So, good choice. I totally agree with that. It's just at the same time, it is going to be a little bit tricky to set up because the Blitzes are likely to be able to stop that Imp before it gets closed. The Blitzes are in position, and I don't think Steel Blue even knows this, as the Blitzes are going to be able to come in here, and the Glaives... Oh, the Glaives actually could probably fight back. I think if the Glaives were to approach, they'd be fine. There's no splash damage coming from the Blitzes, but the Glaives instead decide to hang back as do the Blitzes. Steel Blue did at least see that there's enough of a force they can easily get through with the Blitzes, but at the same... Sorry, the Koda Kane saw that. Steel Blue, however, is going to be able to expand to the center. This is daring. 
yeah, it's like trying to get center against tanks can be disastrous if they bring a Reaper or they bring an Ogre. And it that's exactly the problem. Good. Ogres are Ogres are basically the tank factory's answer to the Cloaky factory, especially to the Glaive Imp strategy that we're seeing right now. Although we aren't seeing any Ogres be built yet, it's just a matter of time. A couple more Blitz is being built for Kane, which will be a decent strategy. Possibly get rid of the commander, possibly get rid of some of the defenses. Maybe get rid of some lone Glaives just hanging around scouting. But more importantly, Kane is expanding along both corners. And I mentioned earlier, this is key to securing this map, is expanding to both corners. We have Steel Blue on the center, but they could easily be flanked by the corner expansions that Kane's got going. The point is that both corner expansions at the moment can die to the glaives. Steel Blue has enough glaives to kill them both. And I think that is what we are seeing exactly now. Oh yeah, there it is. Steel Blue already going into the lower the southwest corner. Just make sure that there's something they can uh, take out. But no, the Lotus is already in position. The Blitz is to finish off as well. Ooh. Not a bad in position, but not the best. Unfortunately, one of the Blitzes does manage to get out of there. So that is going to be Steel Blue managing to just lose a bunch of glaives in the southeast, southwest. And the northeast, there was not a simultaneous attack, which I kind of expected. Like, that would have been a really good idea. Throw both attacks in. Kane can't respond to both. But now Kane can just send the ogre over to that northeast side, which you were talking about there, Hokumoko, because that ogre, the, Hok the ogre, if not the Kodachi, will be the death of these glaives. As they are moving in here, already five of them just completely set, like, set a light. All of them going to go down, I think, for free. All but two. I'm All but two. I must say that this is not Steel Blue's game. No, Steel Blue, unfortunately, is... Yeah, Steel Blue, unfortunately, is going to have a bit of a hard time holding on to this. Their commander, however, is almost saved. The tick coming in here. If the Glaives manage to support this, and it looks like they will, Steel Blue does have about nine seconds to get rid of these Blitzes. If they don't, the commander is dead, but they are able to? Ah, no, nice. Nah. Very tricky. Nah, I like it. Commander's still stunned, but at least it gives him a bit more time to kill off the Blitzes. Great value there. This may have been Steel Blue coming back in the game. It certainly helped them out. I mean, they can't easily take the expansions over to the southwest and northeast right now, but at the same time, they managed to secure their center position and get a bunch of reclaim to work with. So, good job you, Steel Blue. And a bunch of glaives might go right now to the base, which doesn't have much to guard against. Right. There's a Minotaur no, that cannot stop... They will have an area in time. Just barely, Ooh. seven seconds. But the Minotaur will be able to distract the Glaives long enough that it won't go down in time. Although, to be fair, it's going to be pretty heavily damaged. The Glaives just won its head. And the Ogre in time to save it. All right, is Friendly Fire going to nick it? No, Friendly Fire does not kill out the Minotaur. The Ogre able to save the day, as you said, Hokumoko, just in time. A bit cutting it close, I'd say, though. Definitely. So at this point, Ogres are up, and we are still seeing the Glaive Imp strategy build up from a Steel Blue. They just have an on-repeat build. They're not even changing that up, not going for Knights, not going for Ronin, well, Ronin, I guess, at this point would actually be relevant. And that's what I would have done immediately, is just go for the Knights right off the bat, because once you start getting into Ogre territory, you need that heavier unit to be able to get through the Riot and just be able to punch through and just live through the missiles. That's the key thing. They can survive the missile attacks, they can actually counterattack. Um, Steel Blue is accessing the bits. Um, yeah, they are. The production right now, they have a couple caretakers, which we should manage to get that excess down, but yeah. it's still a matter of they the were accessing. Have been, it, it's so simple that, like, okay, I only learned it lately, but whenever you tell a constructor to make a, a caretaker, give it an order later to assist the factory. It is really simple, and it saves so much metal. Yeah, that's exactly what didn't happen here. Steel Blue, they would have 35 metal per second in their factory. Actually, why is that? Okay, that's just kind of weird, because they have 26. Oh, their energy is low. That's the thing. Steel Blue has very little power to work with. That's been their key problem right now. I mean, they have a bunch of metal in the, in the center of the map, but they only have these wind generators in their base. That's only generating 12.6 metal right now, as the wind is a bit slow. Yeah, and they haven't remixed also one of their mixes. Yeah, so at this point, Steel Blue, they are they look like they're just trying to get this one win. They have a, they have all the glaives and imps in the world. They're just looking to find the position they can actually use them in. And the imps getting something, but not managing to take out the ogre. Second imp might be able to get in there, and oh, it's not quite able to either. Not enough, not enough. So at this and point, this it is, is going to... Yeah. 
Oof. Well, at this point, that dead commander... That dead commander is going to be likely turning the game around. The, unfortunately, the imp completely backfiring on Steel Blue, opening everything up for Kane to be able to tear apart this army. These glaives, without them, Steel Blue has basically nothing. Their entire strategy at this point is switching over to Air Factory, trying to use that to probably throw in some Thunderbirds and stun out the army. Maybe they'll have something to work with there. No, yeah, Thunderbirds. Likos. What? Likos. At this stage in the game, with the economy they have, they're going for Likos. No, 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 no. This is desperation. Absolute desperation. They don't have the energy to support this. This is going to be about two minutes at least. And that's if the Liko is completely supported. Right now, it's half an hour, which they do not have. I should note, this game has only been going on for ten minutes, so half an hour would be four times longer, which they clearly don't have as Kane is bearing down on Steel Blue's base and pretty much just has conquered the map. Yeah. As, as we've said, having the corners, they're much easier to defend in the center. Um, and they have, like... Look at it, the center has the same amount of metal as one corner. Yeah, it's three metal extractors, six metal per second. And we see already, this is exactly what I was talking about, the flank is coming in from Kane, and that's why you said, Hokumoko, that the, the corners are super important. That's the thing that, that's the thing we see right now. Kane's conquest of the corners has kept them in this game. Way long, wait, I mean, way better than I would have expected initially, because Steel Blue didn't get a few good kills in but unfortunately did not manage to actually take out the expansion. That was the key thing. They never managed to stop Kane's economy from exploding. Um, I think I think an air switch could have worked earlier with, with like Thunderbirds or something to just kill the, the expansions. Or even, you know, having a single Raven that goes and kills Mexes one by one, it could oh, yeah. work. That would be the. That's another way to go, and that's a very. That's something I don't see people use very often, though, is the Raven from Mex rating. It's a really good strategy because, yeah, it does mean they they can pretty much one shot them. There is enough HP or enough damage on the Ravens to do so, but we don't usually see that, especially not the kind of split. Like you get four or five Ravens, and you split them across all the Mexes, and then your opponent's economy is cut in half. I'd love to see that more often, but we just don't tend to. This is no exception. Well, in um, how do you call it? In high skill games, people can make a, a quite fast. True. So maybe you can once do this and kill some Xs, but the second time you try it, all your Ravens will be mostly dead. And yeah, we are getting what might be the last last fight here. Kane trying to move up here, but the not completely committing to this. They really just want to make sure they yes. get the center. They want to make sure they don't get hit by the imps. They're well aware that they could exist. And they're not wanting to risk anything. I can't say I blame them either. I don't know if they're fully aware of the imps' positioning, but the point is that they are where the imps likely exist. Although I'm not sure I totally agree with the imps being as close together. I see the reason, though. Because the thing is, is that Minotaurs have enough HP they can take one imp shot and not be paralyzed. But not three. Not three. No, that is actually really good thinking on the part of Steel Blue. The risk, however, is that the ticks will disable each other. So you got to be careful about that, but I think it could work if done properly. The question is just, is it even going to be done? At this point, even if that's taken out, I mean, Kane's got production behind it. They have an air factory as well. They have 55 metal per second. They're not even managing to spend all of it. So even without yeah. this, I don't know what hope there is for Steel and Blue. And they're making air. So now the Lico, which is done, by the way, is going to die to Swifts. So at this point, man, this is going to be... Nice. Why? I didn't turn on the music? Why the heck is... Ah, oh, sorry. I'm I'm so sorry, everyone. I keep thinking I turned down the music, and apparently I didn't? Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I had. I, apparently Windows Sound Mixer is not the way to go for this stuff. Ugh, I am so terribly sorry, guys. Anyway, back to the game proper. Now that we actually... Now that you actually can hear me. And it's not a complete music fest. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, back to the game, though. We do have, like I said, the Swiss coming in on the Likos, and that is going to be a bit of a problem for that Lico, which hasn't even found anything. I mean, it's, I think it's found it's found one, maybe two units. <gasps> Ooh, but the Pillagers just making sure that even what yeah, is there is, is not going to be able to do much. Right. Um, well, now you have a Lico on 50 health, 50% 50 health that is just being repaired and not doing anything. But the damage is going to die. Well, at least that's something. 
I mean, they managed to take out that yeah. pillager, but still, the, I mean, the Ronin are a good choice. They will actually keep things alive. Well, they keep some stuff alive. The problem is just that we're clearly seeing Kane does not want to go up the ramp. They know they don't have to, especially now that they have air. They can go in with the Swifts. They can go in with bombers later of their own. They have plenty of money. They can easily afford that. And it looks like they just want to build up an army that doesn't even care if there's imps on the ground. It's going to be fine. And... Oh, no. this was Oof. nice bombing. Really nice bombing. And on top of that, the imps were completely neutralized. I don't think Kane quite realizes this, but they are still trying to be careful about it. And the ogres and being that flex anti-air, taking another Lico, and that is going to be the opening that Kane wants. They should be able to move in here, completely tear apart everything that Steel Blue has built. And with that, I could say, Kane, just push. Just one big push. You've got this. Yeah. I would have built a Dante. Usually if you have enough funds and you have to break something, make a Dante. That's fair. Although to be fair, like half a dozen Minotaurs is pretty much the same thing. And not to mention when you have the Phoenixes on top of that, there's not a whole lot that can stop you. But at the same time, that one Ogre is the... Oh, well, the only ogre left right now. The glaives look like they're trying to see if they can get rid of it, but they're not going to be able to with this positioning. The ogre actually... Are they going to get a shot off? Ooh, maybe not. I like this. Steel loot is spreading out just to make sure that the, st the splash damage doesn't cause any problems, and the Ronin able to get the hit in. But unfortunately for Steel Blue, that is all they've got. The ogre is up. The second ogre is up, and that ogre will be able to tear apart all the glaives if there's a moment of carelessness from Steel Blue, which it looks like, while there won't be, there's also not going to be a whole lot of value found. I think, I'm not sure if it's, you know, the Liberator or not, but the fact that Kane is doing all this battle when uh, the tanks are going on the flatland while the bots are going on the slope means that when the boats go back, they're slower. Also, yes. Rocco's, when they load, they're slower. This is how the Ogre manages to get shots in the, on the on the run-ins. And this overall, is not normal. Yeah, it's but overall, that is exactly the ramp. exactly because of the land. Yeah, and that's yeah. exactly the thing, is that we got that we got that setup, and it's just that's the way it's like that's the way it is. You can't easily go up that ramp. But I think Kane is fine now. I think Kane, they have enough scouting of their opponent, they know exactly what they're up to. And while the chainsaw is coming up for Steel Blue, I don't think it's gonna be too little too late. And that's diverting funds away from their ground armor, it's diverting funds away from whatever options they have to actually deal with the stuff. And that option is running out very quickly. And with that, it looks like it's going yeah. to it's just going to be Kane storming in. This is what we wanted to see before, and this is what Kane is providing now. At half dozen Minotaurs plus the Ogre support, there it is, getting into the main base, and that should be able to take out Steel Blue's factory. The one factory, the Kohibot factory, is heavily threatened right now, but the Caretakers being the main target, as they always are. At this point, that is Steel Blue bl blowing everything up, throwing in the towel, and Kane taking the game. After a fair bit of waiting around in the ramps, trying to find the right position, they just switch ramps completely, and that allows them to take this game. That top ramp. Condition of the west ramp, go to the north ramp. Nicely done, Kane. They move on to the finals of their group. Oh, it's called Emissary well, now. My bad. Yeah. Um, okay, what do we watch now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what's up right now because at this point, it looks like this probably was one of the longer games. We have I saw Zenfor against Kingstead somewhere. Ooh, yes, Zenfor, that'd be cool. Uh, Let's see is... where. How is that going right now? Zenfor is... against Kingstead is twelve minutes in. I'm okay. starting to uh, catch up. All right. Oh, I got lots of uh, messages from everyone to turn off the music. <laughs> yeah, I turn off the music. I'm really sorry. I. <laughs> I switched the music off to an audio channel I can't hear so I can talk to Hokomoko off stream, but the problem is that it means I also can't hear it, so if I don't know it's happening, and I can't see all the mixer levels in OBS, so I can't actually necessarily tell whether or not everything is set up well. Sorry about that, but we will it will be fine now going forward. I am going to turn off the music right now so that everything is good. And then we're back into the game. We do have... Let's see, Zenfer is going for the heavy tanks and... Kingstead going for the Shieldbot Factory. We will be able to see the Fancy Shields. I did turn that on properly. But of course, it's a question of whether or not we even last this long, because at this point, Kingstead has already taken the center of the map quite effectively. They aren't going for the corners, but they... Actually, no, the southwest corner they have, the northeast corner they don't. At the same time, Zenfer is a little bit caught in their base with 10 metal per second disadvantage and no easy way of getting through the Ogres, because of course, I mean, Shields, they have the Racketeers. That is an option, but it's not huge, and unfortunately losing their entire army as they're trying to get rid of even one of the Ogres, if not the Commander, and the rogues, however, managing to find a bit of value getting rid of King's Commander. That's the opening they need. And with that, Zenfer should be able to start taking the center. 
and also protect their commander, also be able to hopefully take the northeast corner for themselves, but at this point, this is the split I was talking about the last game. We get the north-south split, as Zenfer should be able to break that northeast corner, and also take the center as well, while just using these rogues, showing the rogues what Ronin should be able to do, but man, these rogues are finding all the value in the world with their rockets. Well, Zenfer lately really liked uh, rogues, so I'm not the least bit surprised to see it here. Um, rogues are quite fun lately. Yeah, rogues are... I mean, it's kind of funny because you think they wouldn't be as accurate because they're, ar they're shot arcs, but the fact this apparently doesn't actually really matter. Their shot's fast enough and it's it's works well enough that it's just fine. Now, Kingstown with no storage, however, they lost the command, lost the storage in the top left corner, they lost the entire expansion there as well. And also, I just noticed Jump Out Switch coming in from Kingstead to try to help against the force of the shields and everything. But unfortunately, it's not quite enough. And Kingstead is possibly going to go down this Felon Ball. Felon Thug Ball is getting in here. It's managed to get through the start as there's not much left to get in the way. There is that one emissary. That's the only real option available. The factors have been gone to. And that could be game. Unfortunately, for Zenfors being pushed back a little bit. Kingstead. Kingstead throwing in the towel. That is game. We just get in a catch up right mm -hmm. as the game is destroyed. And we don't get to see any shield effects. Ah, shoot. Oh, well. But yeah, Zenfor taking it. And moving on to the head of their group. And I believe that that is the same group, actually. Yeah, it is. So Zenfor is going to be fighting against Kane in the finals. That's pretty cool. So we will mm -hmm. be having the finals very shortly as we get set up for that but it shouldn't be too long it's only about four matches of bills so hopefully it will actually be done in a reasonable amount of time sorry i'm, be, I'm yeah, throwing a lot of shade thank you Aquanim, for hosting the tournament i don't want to throw shade we're, there are just some logistical issues that we need to, that we're going to be sorting out in the future tournaments so this is this is a bit of a trial run big reason why the tournament was as small as it is is that we can work out these logistical issues and get an idea of what we need to do to make the tournaments run smoothly the third map is Titan Duel. This is good. I, I expect a good game. So do I. Titan Duel is a map that I've always quite liked. I mean, it's a map that's, I'd say for vehicle maps, those are flat maps that you get people playing a lot. It's my favorite of that general style of map. But anyway, it looks like we're going to be waiting a little while for everything to set up, so we'll have a short break. Bring back the music. Yes, I know. It'll be fine. The music will be turned off properly next time now that I know the, logis the technical limitations of the Windows sound volume mixer, and I know that I can't actually rely on that to do the job. So, be back in a sec when that's all set up properly. And also, you know, the finals. <laughs>